Greetings from the Apocalypse. So we did quadruple chain making, part one and two, but at the end of that video was Susan's last day for a few months because she's going to Florida to escape the cold weather. So since I won't be able to show you um, a little more of the weaving and then some of the tamping and stuff like that, I am gonna show you mine and I'm gonna explain a little bit about uh, some of the techniques that we use to get a really good looking chain. So this is my quadruple loop and loop. Um, like I said, I think I made this about eight years ago. Um, what's really special about these chains, I mean, obviously, is that they're handmade. And in the modern world, chains are definitely made by machine. So a handmade chain is really a special thing and not something that you see every day. Now, if you see, the chain looks, you know, pretty smooth and even within reason. I mean, like I said, it is handmade. Um, but you really don't achieve that during your weaving. When you finish your weaving, you're definitely gonna have something that looks way more like lumpy and bumpy. So what you do at the end is something we call tamping. So we're gonna use a, a leather mallet and we're going to basically take our chain and roll and gently tap it with a leather mallet to get it rounder and to get it more even. Um, people talk about pulling chains through draw plates and you might pull it through maybe one or let's say two holes on a draw plate, on a wood draw plate to be clear, to make sure it's even at the very end. But if you take your chain and just pull it through a draw plate, you're never going to get the beautiful result that you'll get from tamping because it'll sort of just elongate it out. Um, uh, I am not willing to mess up a chain by doing that. So maybe I'll just ask you to take my word for it though. The secret to a really nice quadruple loop and loop is mainly the tamping. Um, like I said, this chain's already done, but essentially you'd lay it out um, and I'd be taking my leather mallet and tap, 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 and I'd be rolling it as I was doing that. And that's really what makes it rounder and gets it more even. So, um, Viking knits are, those are sort of, um, it's a little bit like crochet in a sense, and that uses all one long length of wire, and those are pulled through a draw plate. Um, but they're more hollow. The woven chains like this have just so many chains all woven together that the tamping is really what gives you that beautiful shape. So, when Susan gets back from Florida, and hopefully her chain will be finished weaving by then, I can show you a live demonstration of how to tamp and how to do that with your chain, but I just wanted to kind of show you what, you know, what we will be aiming for, but it doesn't look quite like this when you finish weaving. So just remember when you're done weaving, don't get all freaked out. Um, it won't look really smooth and even, and a few links may have broken, and that's normal too. And really, we just solder them back together. It's actually not as hard as you'd think to repair them. And like I said, I will <laughs> I'll find a chain that needs repairing so that I can show you that. But um, this chain is about uh, three and a half ounces. So my best advice for making chain in gold is never weigh it till you're done or you will of course stop in horror. Um, chain takes a lot of metal. So what I generally recommend for people, unless you're super hardcore and you wanna make a gold chain and, and you have the money to throw at that, is a really great way uh, to have a versatile piece is to make a silver woven loop and loop. And then you can do like, let's say if you wanna schnaz it up and you wanna do a little gold on the terminations, you can do that. It's an easy way to use a relatively small amount of gold and, and get a lot of impact out of it because it's definitely um, takes a buttload of gold to make a gold chain. So you very rarely get away, even with a relatively short chain and a, and you know, less tight weave, you know, maybe you'll get away with three quarters of an ounce or something like that. But yeah, it's, um, it takes a lot of fucking gold. So just keep that in mind when you're going to go into it. And yes, I literally did not weigh this until I was finished because I knew if I did, I wouldn't make it as long as I wanted. And I think this is around, I don't know, 30 tur, 30, 30 tur, uh, 34, 36 inches. Um, the right length chain is really what looks good on you. 
um, or what you or what you want really or what you think looks good on you. So when I make a chain, normally I just I'm making it and I'm trying it on until I feel like I've hit the right length. So these are just a few more close-up shots of my fancy termination. Although I have to say, um, I like that termination when I did it, and it looks nice. But um, the last few years, I've definitely thought mm, maybe I'll do something a little fancier. Um, believe it or not, these terminations are epoxied on, and I know that sounds shocking, but the benefit of epoxying your terminations on is that when 10 years down the road, you decide you want something different, or let's say like a client was like, I love this, I want it, you know, but I want it to be this length and I needed to either cut some off or add some. If you epoxy your terminations on, you can just heat it up a little bit, they'll come right off, your chain will be undamaged, your terminations will be undamaged, and you can make any kind of changes you like without having to cut off the end. If you solder your terminations onto your chain, you really have you know, no choice but to just cut them off and you'll lose part of your chain. Um, and chain weaving takes a whole lot of time. So uh, we use five minute epoxy, the kind you know that comes into two parts and you mix together and it's clear. It holds shockingly well. Like I said, I know everyone out there is probably having a seizure right now being like, you glue your terminations? But it actually works super well. And I've never had an incidence in the studio even once of them coming off. So something to think about. And when the time comes that uh, Alexis is going to put her terminations on her chain, we'll glue them and I'll show you how that works. That's all for today.